Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So I am currently at the Hyatt Regency here in Sydney, Australia. I just had an incredible trip out here. This is a very, very fun city. The weather has mainly been great, although it is kind of drizzling outside right now, but this has just been so much fun. Um, I happen to be out here during the time of St. Patty's Day. Surprisingly, there's actually, what I didn't realize, a large Irish community in Sydney, Australia. The St. Paddy's Day Festival was really popping and it was just a really fun experience to be out here. But unfortunately, the trip has come to an end, so now I need to head to the airport where I'll be flying with United Airlines for the longest flight that I've done, which is gonna be a 15-hour flight with business class with United Airlines. So let's head over to the Sydney International Airport, go check out some of the lounges before we hop onto the bird to be able to get ourselves a 15-hour long-haul flight back to LA. Alrighty, I just got through airport security. It was a pretty simple and easy process for not having like a TSA pre-check or clear because over here, and I've seen this in other places, if you happen to have a business or a first class ticket, you end up being able to go to your own line. So it's kind of like having either a TSA pre-check or clear where you have just like a lot shorter line, but still have to take out my computer and do that. But still got through airport security in like, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. So. so I have a couple hours before we begin boarding. So now I wanna go check out the different lounges that are offered here in Sydney. So I know that they do have a priority pass lounge. They also have a Centurion lounge. So if you happen to not be flying in business or first class, then you could check out those if you happen to have something like the American Express Platinum card. But since I have a business class ticket, I wanna go check out definitely at least the New Zealand Airlines lounge, which I've heard is the better one to choose. But there's also a Singapore Airlines lounge here as well for business class flyers. So being a Star Alliance member, I can check out these lounges. Um, I may just go hop into the Singapore lounge first. And then after that, go jump into the Air New Zealand lounge because I've heard that that's the, the good one you wanna check out here at this airport. You see of me just walking by the food court, how many people are out there paying probably a ridiculous amount for overpriced McDonald's, KFC, and not having great seats. And this is the reason why having airport lounge access is awesome because you don't have to worry about needing to do any of that type of stuff where you have to sit out in front of the gate, spend a ton of money, and just not be overly comfortable. So airport lounge access for me is just a very nice benefit I ended up getting being parked into this points and miles game. So the good thing about these lounges is that they're actually really close to one another. You just go up the escalator and the um, Singapore uh, business class lounge is immediately right when you get off and then about 20 yards down there's the Air New Zealand um, business class lounge. So pretty nice to be able to have access to both of these this close to one another. I'm first going to go check out the Singapore Airlines business class lounge and I'm going to swim over to the Air New Zealand business class lounge. So the Singapore Lounge here at Sydney Airport is definitely on the smaller side. Um, very minimal offerings. Um, I did get a little food here so I can try out what their breakfast looks like since I didn't eat any breakfast before hopping over to the other lounge. Uh, you do get nice views of the airplanes, which is great, but um, as a whole, this is a very minimal, a step below like a Centurion Lounge. It's not a bad lounge, it just is pretty minimal, small, more intimate. It's not overly packed right now, which is nice, and it is cooler than it is out in just like near the gates, which is quite warm, so uh, that's good. But um, yeah, as a whole, this lounge is just eh, okay. Okay, so now time to launch hop over to the Air New Zealand Lounge. Let's check that out. So this Air New Zealand Lounge is definitely going to be the one you're going to want to visit if you're flying on United from Sydney back to America. I mean, this is a nice lounge. I like the way it's set up. Um, there's a decent amount of space, like it's significantly larger than the Singapore Airlines lounge, um, but it's not packed at all at the moment. Um, way more options when it comes to food. There's even a person who's making pancakes along with, um, it's like uh, eggs on top of it. And then they have like some type of onion. I think it's like a caramelized onion with bacon on the side, but I thought it was really, really good. I mean, I want to go up for seconds and get myself another one, but I know I need to eat some of the food on United, which I've had before, and hopefully it's gotten better since the last time I've done the players with them. But um, I don't want to get too full before going on that um, flight, just because I want to eat some of the food that's going to be in the business class to be able to review that. But as a whole, yeah, this lounge has a lot of things to offer. There's going to be great views of the airplanes. There's a shower room if you need to do that. There's an area for families if you want to go with your children. There's a nice bar. Um, there's many different seats that are really comfortable. Coffee maker, 
drinks if you want to just grab your own beers or get yourself like a mimosa in the morning or something like that if you want to make your own but you have the option so many different options here i like the way it looks nice purple lighting and it's really close to the gate it's only gonna take me about i don't know maybe two minutes at most to walk down over to my gate and i need to board in about 15 minutes i think is when they're going to begin so about 10 minutes i'm head over there but yeah i'll say i'm definitely impressed with this lounge i wasn't thinking much especially after going to the singapore lounge i was like okay well maybe it's going to be close to something like that but just like a little bit above but no this is there's no reason to even go to singapore lounge if you have this one as an option this is clearly a better lounge than the other one Boeing 787 United Polaris uh, flight out of Sydney to Los Angeles and I'll give my initial thoughts I'll at least say it for seat 1A because I actually have flown Polaris before um, initially sitting in this chair it's very comfortable um, I'm pretty sure that 1A now because it's like the bulkhead seat has more space so it's not angled like some of the ones behind where uh, you may have to go a little bit uh, like to the, to the left as you're in the seat. This one, you're just straight ahead, so that's nice. They don't have to like be at an angle, which for some people can be a little bit annoying. Um, it typically doesn't bother me. I don't really notice it that much. They gave us a welcome glass of champagne that I thought was pretty good, so I was happy with that. So this aircraft was definitely a little bit on the warmer side as I sat down, but it's nice to be able to have the overhead nozzles, personal ones. Flight attendants have been spot on. I've spoken with a couple different people. Um, so far, uh, mainly just one gentleman who's been kind of like been here and working on my side, but um, he's been great. Um, I did ask for some pajamas, which you can get on a business class flight with United. It has to be a certain amount of hours, so I think that for most of the ones that are going over to Europe, you won't be able to get it, but I believe if it's over like 12 hours or something right around there, uh, there's only a few routes that have it as an option, so when I got on here, I asked him for the pajamas, and I noticed that there wasn't that many pajamas, so it's probably just a first come, first serve, but there were pajamas that they did have up there, and people were asking for them. So later on, I will try them on, see how they fit, compared to some of the other pajamas that I've gotten. Usually, it's only ever been first class, now that I think about it, that I've gotten pajamas in, because even the other time I flew players, I didn't get any pajamas in that. So, um, yeah, very few, I think, business class give it as an option, so it is nice to be able to have it as an option, so I don't have to be in these clothes the entire time for the next, I believe the flight is actually a little under 14 hours. I think it's 15 hours if you fly from Los Angeles over to Sydney, but flying over to Los Angeles ends up being 14 hours.
Okay, so I just finished up my second meal, which is kind of like the snack meal you can end up getting, which is the, uh, I got some grilled cheese along with some tomato soup. Just going over the meals as a whole, I will say that I've flown with United in their uh, domestic first class. I've flown Polaris before, and I've always had a issue with their food. Um, but I will say this time, I was pleasantly surprised at how much better their food tastes like compared to the other times I had their food. So the initial meal, which was the salad along with the salmon and beef uh, short rib, was pretty tasty. Yeah, I, I don't have any complaints about that. I mean, it wasn't the best thing ever, but I remember eating food before in Polaris and thinking that I, I just didn't want, I didn't like it at all. Like I didn't even finish the meals. Um, and then even in their domestic first class, I remember getting the same uh, having the same feeling where I got one of the meals and just did not want to finish it. But that was not the case here. The beef short rib wasn't the best, but it was decent. The salmon along with the salad, also fine. You know, nothing special, but okay. And I will say that I did really like the dessert, which was the uh, Sunday at the works. There was hot fudge, caramel, whipped cream, cherries. I mean, it tasted really good, so that's off to them for the dessert. Dessert was definitely I would say the highlight point of all the different food. Um, when it came to the snacks that I got that you can order during flight, um, the grilled cheese was decent, and then the tomato soup wasn't very good. So if you dip the grilled cheese in the tomato soup, it, you know you can kind of do it that way, but just eating the tomato soup by itself, it wasn't really for me. So I didn't finish that, but I did finish the grilled cheese, and I did finish the rest of the other meals. So I will say that that was a uh, that was pretty tasty. Yeah, as a whole so far, the couple of meals that I've had here in United Polaris for this long haul flight from Sydney over to Los Angeles has been, I would say, fine. Nothing spectacular, but definitely way better than the last time I flew Polaris or the first class domestic. And these PJs, I have a medium, I believe is what they gave me. It's definitely a little bit on the smaller side, so I probably should have gotten a large. Um, I think it might even be like medium small. So I think they kind of do sizes that way. So maybe I chose the wrong size, but it's uh, comfortable. I like the pants. The pants are fitting fine. The top, I can just, it's kind of coming up a little bit as you can see on my sleeves. But now as I have right around about seven and a half hours left of this flight, I'm gonna try to get myself about a four to five hour nap. So I'm gonna put this into lay flat bed mode and then get some sleep. Okay, so now I'm here in the fully lay flat mode here in United Polaris with the bulkhead seat. And I'll definitely say that having the bulkhead seat is going to be better. A little bit tight on the sides. I definitely can feel on the sides. They have that kind of cocoon feeling that you get in business class as compared to something like first class where you feel like you're just completely like almost on like a full bed. It's, it's really, really nice. Um, but I'll say that it's decently comfortable. Um, it's, it's definitely not bad. I like this pillow a lot. So this, like, I think it's a Saks Fifth, like, memory foam style pillow. Uh, feels really, really good. So that's definitely going to be, like, the, the more of the highlight here. When it comes to the amount of space, I have, like, I don't know, what, half of a foot behind me. And then I still have a, a quite a bit when it comes down to, like, my footwell space. So, um, and when it comes to, like, side to side on that, it's not even, it doesn't even feel like a well. And it's probably because it's the bulkhead where I have, like, little more space for the your legs so that's nice so but yeah hopefully I can get myself about four and a half to five hours of sleep before waking up having one more meal and then landing in Los Angeles so I just woke up about 15 minutes ago from my sleep I slept for um, I, probably close to five hours I think it was about four hours and 45 minutes as a whole um, it did take me a minute to get to sleep here I was just kind of rolling around and I back wasn't feeling the greatest the, the pillow was really really comfortable so I do like the pillow but um, for a moment I was just kind of having a hard time and then eventually I found a spot on my side that did work out and did feel comfortable for some reason I couldn't figure exactly what it was but like my lower back wasn't feeling the greatest but now they're about to be doing breakfast service and I think it's like 20 ish minutes so look forward to that and then we'll report back after that and then give my final thoughts of a long haul flight with United Polaris from Sydney, Australia to Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you. 
So we're about 40 minutes away from landing down in Los Angeles. I'll give you my final thoughts for the longest flight that I've ever taken, which is from Sydney, Australia to LAX. So just starting off with the ground service, I like the option of having the Air New Zealand Lounge, definitely better than the Singapore Lounge at Sydney International Airport. Um, I liked the fact that they had just the different food options that were there and then the person who was making pancakes and eggs right there, that was a nice touch that I really enjoyed. The look of it, the feel of it, uh, definitely a, a good lounge that I would say to check out there. Um, when it comes to the flight experience with United, I would say that this actually beat my expectations because I have flown United players before and the other times I flew with it, the experience wasn't as good as this one. So uh, the first thing is the food I've noticed is way better on this flight route as compared to the ones that I've done it on before. I have been decently happy with the meals that I've been given. Nothing has blown me away, but I'll say that I was surprised each one of the meals that I was given tasted fine. Now, I know maybe I should have higher expectations than that being in business class, but since I already did a business class before with United and the food was horrible, um, I guess anything above horrible is an improvement in my thought process of doing this. But um, I'll say that the service was really good here as well. Um, there was a gentleman who was mainly on my side who was working with me. Um, I did one time go up as I was going to the bathroom and asked one of the women if she could reload my drink and I think she just wanted me to push the button and not go back there. I was already going to the bathroom but she seemed a little annoyed by that. But, so if you have any questions just push the button don't don't go back there. When it comes to the entertainment system and the options of things that you can watch I was very happy with the different options. There is a number of different movies that I wanted to see that I haven't seen that were available here and there was also many films that I have seen but are just great classic ones that if I want to I could rewatch. so that was really cool being able to watch something like Ex Machina as a film that I've already seen but then also having something like The Holdovers uh, being a film that I haven't seen which is one that I wanted to see. But I guess maybe because of the fact that the last few international flights that I've done have been with international carriers when it comes to like the entertainment options. There are many foreign films and even though I do like foreign films there's a lot of them that I never even heard of that were options on there. Whereas with this there's many of the regular Hollywood films and a lot of indie films that I would want to see so I just liked having that as options. The screen itself while it's not anything that's spectacular it's going to do the job for what you want here in this business class seat. I will say that the headphones like I said earlier are not the most comfortable. The audio coming through it is fine but the way it fit on my head was way less comfortable than other headphones that I've had in business class. When it comes to the space for this seat I think that it's pretty comfortable. I like having right here is the armrest. You have this adjustable armrest over here on the right. Um, and I do like this cubby. Uh, I like having it up here as well. There's others sometimes in maybe business class and sometimes even first class where the cubbies are like down and you have to like reach into something. I'd rather just have something where I can open up here on the side. So that's a nice touch that I like having in Polaris. Um, when it goes into lay flat mode, definitely a decent amount of space front to back. If you have to be six foot six, I don't think you'll have a problem fitting in here. Um, the width on it isn't like overly wide. You're probably gonna have to sleep on your side. Um, that's what I had to do. And then when it came to like I said earlier, my back as I was sleeping on here, it took me a minute to try to get comfortable in this seat. But as a whole, I was still able to get myself almost five hours uninterrupted of sleep in this lay flat bed. So. That's great because I've flown in economy internationally and when doing that, while I may be able to get myself five hours of sleep, typically what ends up happening is I'm going to wake up a couple of times throughout it because of the fact that I'm just not in the most comfortable position. Another nice touch that I liked was the pajamas that you can get. Now it is first come, first ask to get it, so not everyone got pajamas, but if you do ask for it, early you should be able to get it. So what I want to use United again if I happen to be flying either to or from Sydney. So the thing I'll say is that one, I'm happy with the deal that I got now. The deal has changed because United did a big devaluation. I think it's like over 100,000 points now for this flight, whereas when I got it, it was 80,000 points. The taxes and fees were about 100 bucks that it cost me. Um, but uh, comparing to other options out there, which whether it be Qantas, I haven't done Qantas business class. I did talk to some people while in Sydney, Australia about Qantas business class and they weren't big fans of it. On my flight here, I flew over on Fiji Airways. Now, it's not exactly comparable because that flight was 11 hours and then I went to Fiji 
And then there, I flew from Fiji over to uh, Sydney, Australia. I would say that I enjoyed the Fiji Airways experience more. Um, not the entertainment. I don't think the entertainment was better. I do think that the service was just incredible with Fiji Airways. And I also enjoyed the food more. But if we're looking at like US carriers, I would prefer doing this business class seat with United over something like what I've had with American. Now, maybe other people would say differently, but I enjoy Polaris. I think Polaris is good, especially with the service. I like the way that everything's set up. Um, the food was always just been kind of like the issue for me, but this flight right here, the food was good. But yeah, as a whole, I would say that this was a fine experience. Nothing blew me away, but I wasn't dissatisfied with really anything in this business class seat. So I would say that if you have the option to fly United Polaris over to or from Sydney, Australia to Los Angeles, I think that you'll be happy with the experience. Again, probably not going to be blown away, but it's going to be a much more comfortable way of flying for 14 hours as compared to being in an economy seat. So normal price for this seat ends up being somewhere near about $4,000. So having it only be about 100 bucks with 80,000 points, I feel like it's a pretty good deal. And that's the reason why I like playing the points and miles game because it allows me to travel like this for way less than what most other people who are in this cabin are paying for it. That's my review of United Polaris. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions about either how to book this or about the experience itself. Now, if you happen to really like this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.